Hello, this is Colin Reed with Project Spurs, and today we're going to do an audio piece looking into the three breakout candidates that I pointed out about a month ago. We're going to check in to see kind of how they're doing so far in the new season. First, I wanted to just describe some of the stats that I used in that article and some of the stats I'm going to be using today and why I'm using the stats that I'm using. So the first one that comes to mind is usage rate that's pretty simple it's neither good nor bad if a player has high usage rate or low usage rate that doesn't really mean anything on its own but what i'm really looking for here is can any of these players be a first second or third option efficiently because really you need uh at least a first and a second option and a lot of the times a first second and a third option who can take a lot of the usage who can take a lot of the possessions and be efficient while doing it. That's what you need to be to be a championship level offense. So usage rate is one of the things that I'm looking at. If you think there are five players on the court in any given time, 100% divided by five is 20. So anytime a player has a usage rate over 20, that is an uh, above average usage rate. And I just spoke of being efficient on offense during that time uh, when they're using the possessions and the stat that I'm using for that is true shooting and the reason I'm taking that as the stat that we're using for efficiency is because it takes into account free throws and three-pointers counting more um, than just a regular two-point shot so with that you kind of get a full picture of everyone's game or someone's offensive game there uh, effective field goal percentage is pretty good as well but it doesn't take into account true um, free throw shooting. So with the true shooting, it basically is a very good estimation of when this player shoots, how many points per possession is that player scoring? Divided by two, and that's how you get the percentage. Um, so a little neat trick that I learned from Ben Taylor of Thinking Basketball is that with true shooting, it's really a contextualized stat. So you don't just want to look at true shooting and say, oh, this player has a true shooting of... Um, 53%, you're not really going to know if that's good or bad on its own without looking at what the true shooting is for that season because league rule changes and style changes really shift the average true shooting. And what we're really looking for is above average true shooting. And really, we want it to be fairly well above average, but the biggest thing we're looking for is above average. So there's not like one true shooting number that, oh, this is good. You know, like with three-point shooting, 40% is a good three-point shooter, and that's probably going to be the same for a while until three-point shooting becomes better and better as the younger players who have kind of been born on this uh, three-point shooting style start coming into the league. True shooting is not like that. We're really comparing it to league average. And so, for instance, last season, league average was 57%, but with the new changes and with fans back in the stands and all that, uh, true shooting um, has actually fallen league-wide down to 54.9%. Uh, so that's the new average that we're looking at there. And so really what I care about is how these players are getting their shots, You know, how much usage do they have, and how efficient are they in their usage. Because this Spurs team has a lot of defensive options. You know, if they were on the path to a championship, they could they could easily cobble together a high level defense. But they're really lacking that number one option, that shot creator, that that player who can take a lot of the usage, a lot of the possessions, and just be a highly efficient scorer with those possessions. They're lacking that number one option, and really they're lacking the number two option as well. So just kind of some research I did. Every championship team from the Bucks back to the Spurs. So if you look at all of them, they all had number one options for sure, number two options for sure, and sometimes number three options that had higher than average usage rate and higher than league average true shooting. The only exceptions in that whole time, um, so Kyrie Irving in 2016 was like 0.1 or 0.2% lower than league average. So basically league average. And then Tim Duncan was like a percent and a half lower in 2014. But Tony, Manu, and Kawhi were all higher than league average in their true shooting. So that kind of 
made up for it. And also Tim brings a lot more to the court than just efficient shooting. And he didn't need to be the number one go-to option on that team. They had, especially in the playoffs, you know, Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili and Kawhi was kind of starting to come into his own at that point. But other than that, like you're looking back and all of these teams have above average, efficient, number one and number two options who can create offense. So we're really looking to see if any of these Spurs young players can develop into that. So first, let's look at Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker's usage rate so far this season has been above average. It is 21.9%. So he is using a little bit more than average in terms of the possessions that he's using. Um, His true shooting is fairly low. It's the lowest on the team. And right now, like I said, league average true shooting percentage is 54, 54.9%. So you want to be above that number. So Lonnie Walker right now is at 49.5%. So that's fairly low. And that is the lowest on the team. What is causing that for Lonnie right now? Mostly it is his three point shooting. So he's shooting 30.7% from three. His shot distribution is actually one that we would appreciate He's shooting 53% of his shots from three and only 18% of his shots from long mid range. So that's a ratio that is, you know, fairly modern, (laughs) friendly to the modern game, but he's just missing his threes right now. You know, it's 30%. If that number goes up to 35% or even if that number goes up to 37, you know, kind of like, if he becomes a good three-point shooter or even a great three-point shooter, that true shooting is going to go way, way up. The other number that we can look at is free throw rate, league average free throw rate. and that free, So free throw rate is um, free throws attempted per field goal attempted. And the league average is .221. Um, free throws are an incredibly efficient offensive option because even if you're an 80% free throw shooter, That is a 1.6 point per possession if you take a two-shot foul. And that would be even more efficient than a 50% three-point shooter, which is an insane um, kind of three-point shooting percentage. So free throws are incredibly efficient, and having lots of free throws can lead to a very valuable or a very um, efficient offense. So... We want that free throw rate to go up higher as well. Lonnie Walker has a fairly low free throw rate. It's 0.171, which is about uh, 5% lower than league average, which is 0.221. So Lonnie's numbers so far have been a little bit low, but they're kind of variable. So his if his shooting co- goes up, if the shots go in, if it's just a matter of the ball not falling for him, If that changes over the next month or so, then I think that that true shooting looks a lot better and then we're having a really good feeling about who he is as a player. I don't think that Lonnie can become that number one, number two, or number three option like I was talking about, but I do think that he could be a valuable 3 and D player in this league. The next player that we're looking at is Keldon Johnson, who also is having a little bit of a rough go of it so far in the first month of the season when it comes to efficiency. He has a higher than league average usage rate at 22.9% of the possessions when he's on the court he's using. And his true shooting is about 5% lower than league average. Actually, it's it's better than it was at one point. It's it's only um, 3.5% lower than league average. He has a 51.5% true shooting. And for him... Some of that is coming from, so his three-point shooting is average. It's 35.7%. His two-point shooting is 47%, which is kind of low. His distribution maybe is not quite as good. Um, He's taking um, kind of a lot of shots from floater range, that 3 to 10 feet. He's taking about 40% of his shots from that range. And while he is taking a higher-than-average amount of free throws per field goal attempts. He's taking uh, 0.233 versus 0.221 compared to league average. You know, if he could maybe shift some of those floater range shots, you know, 20% of his shots are in the restricted area or right at the rim. And 38%, 
96.9% of his shots are a little bit further out uh, in the floater range. You know, his long mid-range shots, he's only taking about um, 18 or 19% of his shots from there. So that's pretty good. But just a lot of those shots in the paint uh, outside of the restricted area, and if he can maybe bring that in just a little bit, those become a whole lot more efficient shots, especially if he can draw more free throws. That's going to lead to him having a higher efficiency as well. I think Keldon Johnson as a number one option, that is a little bit difficult, but I do think that he is a player who could be an efficient offensive player if he's playing off like an established number one, number two, number three option. So in the bubble, he had a lower than average usage rate. He had like a 16% usage rate, but he's an incredibly efficient player. So I think he's a player that you can put around really good offensive players, and he's going to fill in really, really well. He's going to be able to take advantage of the space that's created. I think he just, as an individual player right now in his career, has a little bit of a harder time creating those opportunities for himself. If you pass him the ball, he's probably going to create an opportunity for himself in the the paint outside of the restricted area the floater range um and not all the way to the basket or not a kind of pull up three so i think he's someone who if someone else creates the opportunity for him and he's in the right place at the right time can make really good on that but less of a number one or a number two option style player but definitely a player who could benefit or who uh, a team as the number four, number five option on the floor. So the last player that we were been looking at this season is Devin Vassell, who has had a pretty dang good season so far. His usage rate is below average. It's 18.6%, but his true shooting is one of the better ones on the team, and it's higher than league average. He has a 57.6% true shooting, and a lot of that is fueled by his three-point shooting, um, he's a 40% three-point shooter for the season, which is really good, and a 51% two-point shooter, which is pretty all right as well. His free throw rate is lower than league average by a decent amount, but one of his best skills is his three-point shooting, so that's okay. It's harder to get fouled on three-point shots, especially now with some of the rule changes and some of the points of emphasis that they have. His three-point shooting... Um, is also his most popular shot. He takes, uh, of all of his field goal attempts, he is shooting three-pointers almost 50% of the time, and then long mid-rangers about 25% of the time, 26% of the time, which is which is higher than you would want, but, but not terrible. And then kind of each progressive um, shot location from that goes lower and lower. The floater range is 16%, and then at the rim is 8%, 9%. So that three-point shot is really what makes him pretty dang valuable at this point in his career. And he has been able to do some stuff with the ball in his hands. So his usage rate is a little bit lower than average. However, we are seeing an efficient offensive player, and I would be interested to see if they can ramp his usage rate up if his efficiency still ha stays high because there can be a correlation. That's what makes superstars superstars really is there can be a correlation between usage rate and inverse correlation even between usage rate and efficiency. You know, if someone has to create more offense for themselves and for others as they are using more of the possessions, their efficiency goes down. And so... Uh, a superstar player is someone whose usage rate can go up, but they still sustain a very high level offense. So it will be interesting with Devin Vassell. Hopefully as the season goes on, they give him more and more responsibility and more opportunities to use possessions and that he becomes an above average uh, usage rate player in terms of having more of the possessions to use for himself. And if he's able to maintain this efficiency, then I think the Spurs have something there. I don't know if Devin Vassell is that number one option type player, even at his peak. Uh, but I do think he actually could be a number two or number three option, the best version of Devin Vassell. And so I think that the Spurs really have something there in terms of a piece for the future that could be very valuable for the next iteration of the really good Spurs team. You know, they need that number one option. They need that number two option and probably a number three option as well. And I think Devin Vassell could slide into that number two or number three option if he continues on the path that he has been on so far. But that's just one month into this season. We're going to check back in in another month to see how these players are doing. So far, Keldon and Lonnie have not had kind of the start of a breakout season you would want, but both of them 
have areas to improve on fairly easily to make those numbers change quite a bit. So in a month, those could look a lot better. And the number one thing that I would really hope to see by this time next month is Devin Vassell being allowed to use more possessions and to see if that efficiency continues to hold steady. So this has been Colin Reed with Project Spurs looking at the three breakout candidates. We will investigate these guys again in about a month, and I hope you'll have a wonderful day.